This lecture is an introduction to evidence-based public health. We hope that the principles and skills in this lecture will be useful to you both as a student and as a public health practitioner. We will cover the definition, steps, and when to use evidence-based public health and detail the first step of the process, asking the question. This slide provides an overview of the topics covered in this video. A great example of applying evidence-based public health is shown here that flu shots are effective as determined by a systematic review which looked over 50 different research studies. So first, let's consider the question, what is evidence? Perhaps when you think of evidence, you may think of a criminal investigation. Can you identify the character in the left-hand picture? What do criminal investigations and public health have to do with each other? We can think of it this way. For either to go forward, each relies on a special kind of information called evidence. The evidence is a piece of information that supports a conclusion. In our legal system, for a conclusion to be acceptable as true, there must be evidence to support it. So the left-hand picture is Perry Mason. Perry Mason and the CSI team are in different sectors of the judicial system, but they both use evidence to zero in on the truth of what happened in a crime, and public health can use evidence to determine the truth of how a disease is transmitted or what risk factors contribute to health conditions or what's the best intervention to positively impact the health of a certain population. The evidence by itself does not make a decision for you, but it can help to support public health functions. So evidence like science is what points to an underlying truth. When talking about evidence in public health, we're asking questions that point to a truth about the population that we're interested in. What is it that really works to improve health? In general, evidence that is regarded as best are the results from research or scientific investigations. We want to emphasize that evidence-based public health is a process, and you know this intuitively, that there are a lot of factors beyond simply the evidence from research that influence decision making. So when we're talking about EBPH, we have to accommodate the fact that it's complex and involves multiple disciplines of practitioners in dynamic communities that are ever-changing. So the model of EBPH involves balancing the best available evidence with your professional expertise and knowledge, the needs and values of a community versus the resources, regulatory requirements, political environment, and all of these factors balancing together to do what's best for that population. The concept of using evidence to improve healthcare really began with clinical medicine, with the evidence-based medicine movement. You had a nice overview on EBM through your readings. You also had an excellent summary in the Brownson article on the development of evidence-based public health. There are many synonyms for EBPH. Have you heard any of these phrases, best practices, best evidence, or model practices? I've also heard evidence-based intervention quite often. As you can see, EBPH has many aspects, including the development, implementation, and evaluation of programs and policies through applying scientific reasoning. Notice that the use of data and information system is one piece of EBPH. This data may be found in journal articles or as standalone data on a website. So when should you use EBPH? It has many uses. It can be used to develop evidence-based programs or policies to compare interventions. Many grants require that the proposed interventions are evidence-based. It can also be used to help answering any public health related question. Now let's consider the five steps of EBPH. First is asking the public health question. Next, you acquire the evidence and then you appraise it to make sure that it's valid and reliable. 
Next, you need to apply that evidence to the situation. Finally, assess the impact of applying that evidence, and that may lead to more questions. In this section, we will cover how to ask the question, specifically how to define and specify your question and categorize that question using different frameworks such as the PICO format. When talking about defining a health issue, we want to frame the question so that it can be answered. We're going to look at a few examples. Here's a situation. You work in a busy geriatric clinic, which is experiencing difficulty getting its patients to remember to take their medications. A non-answerable question would be, why do patients forget to take medications? It is considered non-answerable because it would be difficult to find the answer quickly or through the literature. A better question would be, what interventions have been shown to be effective on improving patient compliance and taking medications? We not only want a question that can be answered by looking at the literature, we can also categorize that question. This will help when trying to figure out which resources would best answer those questions. We're going to look at background and foreground questions. A background question requires some general knowledge about a condition or a situation. Resources that can answer these kinds of questions tend to be textbooks and reference books. For example, what is the appropriate heartbeat for a 15-week fetus? Foreground questions, on the other hand, are those more specific questions that can be answered by looking into the literature. Here's an example of a foreground question. Which is the most effective intervention for back pain of a 40-year-old truck driver, pain medication or exercise? In this question, we see that the population and interventions to be studied are very specific. The best places to search for this question would be databases such as PubMed. Once you have an answerable question, it helps to break it down into elements so you can think through the search terms. One format you may use is PICO. The format was originally developed for evidence-based medicine, so typically the P stands for patient, but in public health, you might use the P for population. You want to list here a description of the population and its health issue. I and C stand for intervention and C for comparison as in a comparison intervention. You don't have to have a comparison intervention. It could be just no intervention. The outcome should be something that's measurable that you would like to know what the typical intervention effect is. So let's look at our example and see how this works. We already had a pretty good question with the truck driver and back pain, but we did not have a measurable outcome that we were going to look at. In this case, we chose less time missed from work. So we will be looking for studies that compared pain medication to exercise for back pain and measured less time missed from work. So the PICO format is a way to define a question and further specify the elements that you're looking for. It is not meant to force you to add things to your question that don't belong there, but it does help to make it more specific. So far, we have been focusing on intervention questions, asking what works best. But there are many types of questions that we ask in public health, such as what causes or leads to a health issue? What is the best way to diagnose or screen? What is the prevalence of a disease? Or what is the experience of a patient or population? For different questions, there are different frameworks. The point of these frameworks is to guide the specificity of the question, making it easier when you move on to finding the evidence. You will notice that between all of these frameworks, that all of them require adding in the population. This is important as it may, helps to make the question very specific to which population is the evidence going to apply to. 
You will also see that outcome is used in all of them as well, as we need something that we can look to that is measurable and easy to compare. The next step in the process is finding or acquiring the evidence, which involves searching databases and other resources. This will be covered in the next lecture.